Hello Lizzie here, welcome back to my sewing room. Today I'm going to show you how to make this seasonal wreath. Now I have made it for the holiday season but actually it would be perfect for the springtime, Easter maybe, the summertime maybe you have a summer barbecue you can make one of these or perhaps for the autumn time for the fall. So all you would need to think about is changing the colours of your fabric, maybe changing the colours of your foliage and away you go. Something really beautiful to make and so so easy. So how do we make it? So the first thing you need to do is to either buy or cut some five inch squares. So I've chosen two different fabrics here and you can have as many different fabrics as you like. I've used quilting cotton, you could use any sort of fabric and in fact I thought that possibly if you make it out of thumb, something like PVC or something like that you can actually go outside which would be really fun wouldn't it? Um, so you need five inch squares, I've done probably about 12 to 14, we'll see how we get on. So the first thing you need to do, if I just take one of these, this is really easy to do. So you take one square and you fold it in half, okay? So fold it in half and because it's a square it doesn't matter which way you fold it, they're both going to be the same. And you're going to stitch from about an inch up from the bottom all the way along here and even though this is a folded edge and I'll show you when I've done it, you're going to stitch all the way along here across and down about an inch so you're leaving a turning gap. Um, best thing to do is to do it right sides together because you're going to turn it through. So just to recap, about an inch from the bottom all the way across, uh, across there, up there even though it's a fold because it makes a really nice crisp edge, across the top and down about an inch leaving that turning gap. So I'm going to do that now, we'll do one because I've already got loads made up. So if I bring my sewing machine in, so again like I said about an inch up from the bottom and do yourself a locking stitch. So just go forward a couple of stitches, back a couple of stitches because we're going to turn this through and you need it to be nice and strong. About a quarter of an inch um, seam allowance. Now come right up to the edge, I mean oh, I would say it's about a sixteenth of an inch or perhaps a millimetre because all we want really is a crease line, a nice stitch line so it looks like we cut our fabric but we actually haven't and you're losing the minimal amount on the width. So a quarter of an inch now down the side, come down to that last corner, pivot and turn and about an inch up from that corner and again another little locking stitch. You only need to do two stitches, that's plenty. So we'll just move the machine away and I'll get my little scissors. Now I'm just going to trim my threads, I'm going to be really good um, and I'm just going to get rid of those, just pop them on the floor. Um, so we've got our turning gap there, so if we have a look at it there you'll be able to see that I've stitched to just there but I've gone all the way around and can you see that little tiny tiny seam right on the bottom where the fold is. So don't think oh that's not necessary, actually it makes a huge difference to how your little fluffy little bobble looks like. Look at that lovely sort of bow tie isn't it? So if we then take our hemostats, now these are really a crafting essential so you'll find them anywhere, if you go onto Amazon you'll find them, eBay you'll find them and what I'm doing I'm actually popping the hemostats through the little gap and I'm grabbing the furthest away corner on both sides okay and, and you just literally just grab the fabric and bring it through and it makes a huge difference to turning something as little as this and uh, it, you get the nice points, it's all really makes it super easy. Uh, don't push your pokey tool through the fabric uh, but at the end of the day it's not something we're going to wear, it's something that we're going to decorate our house with. Right, so, so now we've turned it through and we've got the most perfect little 
little puffy little pocket to put our stuffing in. Now I'm just going to get some toy stuffing here and obviously you can get this anywhere. You could use an old cushion or an old pillow, something like that. It's entirely up to you what you put into your little puffy bow. But I'm just going to use this lovely toy filling. And all I'm going to do is fill my bow up. I'm not going to make it super padded. I just want to make it so it's a little bit puffy. Now while I'm doing that, just have a quick look at this. You can find access to my Goal Club from my website. Sign up and you can connect to my Facebook Live events and join in all the fun my Gold Club members have on a weekly basis. And of course you get free patterns. See my Gold Club video on YouTube for more information. I've just got this little bit of toy stuffing to put in my puffy bow and just so you can see I use my hemostats also to stuff my little it's either going to be a toy isn't it or something like this and it really helps because you can pop the stuffing right into the corners um, you can use a pokey tool if you want to but I find these invaluable so there we are so that's our lovely little puffy bow done and it's not too fat and it's not too slim look at that it's beautiful now you could if you wanted to run this under the the machine and just close that gap or you could just hand stitch it it's entirely up to you but I do neither I just get my ribbon I've cut about nine inches in length and I'm just going to tie not even a bow but a knot around the middle and it kind of seals those open edges together you can't see where you stuffed your your puffy bow so I always make sure that when I do that last knot, I'm going across my bow like that. And I then just trim the ends. So you can just do a little, a diagonal line, a diagonal cut, and just trim that away. And what you could also do with your scissors, like you would with paper, is to actually sort of curl those ends. It makes them really pretty, um, just like you would if you were present wrapping. So there we are. So that's our little puffy bow made. Now we need to apply them to the wreath. Now, can I just say that although I'm doing a holiday one, a Christmas one, you can do a spring wreath, a summer wreath, an autumnal wreath exactly the same way and do you know what I think that's a good idea that I might do that for you in 2020. So like I say I've got a metal wreath here you can't see it because I've covered it and what I've done so far is wrap some hessian ribbon all the way around the metal wreath so you can't see the metal wires. I then pop some little sort of decorations in there little sort of ferns a little bit of mistletoe. I've also got some lovely sparkly lights as well that are operated by battery which is really super easy and I've made myself a lovely bow. Now I'll show you in a sec how to do that bow. Now the next thing we need to do is to actually uh, put our little puffy bows on there, start placing them on there. Now I use a hot glue gun. You, if you don't like hot glue gun then perhaps you could pin them on, maybe even use um, quilting clips you know, like, um, like safety pins and pin them on that way so you can then take them off and reuse the whole thing maybe for the springtime or the Easter, that would be amazing. So I'll just quickly show you how I made the bow because it's really easy. So you need some really nice wide ribbon, about two inches wide, um, and it needs to be wired so it gives a little bit of shape. Now all I do, I must admit, I guess it a little bit, but I'll measure it for you. <laughs> so I make the first loop. So that's my first loop and that's the loop that goes on the top of the bow. Um, so I said I'm going to measure it, but I'm, all I'm going to do now is bring the other one over and cut it to size. So if I do that, and I'm going to hot glue the layers together. Let me just get my tape measure and they overlap by about a half an inch. So that's 17 and a half inches, but it's thereabouts. So find the middle. So I'm going to just going to put a little bit of hot glue there. You really don't need a lot and just put one end down and give it a squidge. 
And don't forget, this is really hot. I must admit, I'm used to a hot glue gun. I think I, my fingers are, have, have got used to it over the years. So now that's your first layer done. And you can see that you've made a lovely bow. It's really super. You can see it's got that lovely shape. Now the next layer needs to be bigger than that. And again, I kind of guess, which is really bad, isn't it? But I just lay this over the top and I want to be able to bring my ends over, lay that in the middle but I want my ends to be longer it needs to be a double bow so then all I'm going to do is bring this end over and I'm going to say yep that's about right I'll measure it <laughs> just so you know <laughs> and so let me just do that there you can know how what I've used I mean you may want to make it bigger you may want to make it smaller but it gives you a head start so that's 24 and a half inches so again just find the middle so this time because it's a lot bigger I'll just fold that over and again just a little bit of hot glue you really don't need a lot it's such good a good product to use for this sort of crafting so I've brought my end into the middle and I'm just going to lay the other end over by about half an inch and again just sort of squidge them together be careful of your fingers like I say and then you see you've got the makings of the back part of the bow so you get that lovely shape again and you can see how that looks so obviously now you need to layer the two together so just put some glue on the back of your first bow and pop that into the center so now you can see how that looks and this is why wired ribbon is so good for this because you get that lovely shape but we also need to do the tails now um, I just cut a length I should imagine that's about 30 inches that's a really generous length um, you really don't need as, as much as that but I kind of like to play on the side of caution really but if you don't have much to play with obviously you want to sort of measure those out before you start just to make sure you've got enough and it wants to be a nice big size bow for a big wreath I've done 12 inches yes that's 32 inches um, so sort of scale it down if your wreath is smaller so now we're going to do the tails but we want to cover up that glue in the middle or the joining in the middle so I literally just wrap them around so I go over the top and bring this tail in and hang it down and then I take that one across the top again and bring that down and so what you end up with is a really lovely and you can squidge it because it's wire you can sort of gather it up um, and there you have the bow with the tails but you need to secure it obviously now you can stitch this if you want to um, but hot glue really does the trick again just gather it up with your fingers and then we need to do the back as well just to make sure that other little piece of ribbon stays put and just give that a, a push so it sticks together and then we just need to cut the tails so what I do is I bring the two pieces of ribbon together fold them in half so the folded edges are on the top get my scissors and just cut in a diagonal like that so there's the folded edge there are the wired part of the ribbons and I've gone in okay so what that means is oh, don't forget this is wired which makes all the difference so we'll give that a little twist and a turn so there we are now you can put one of those lovely puffy bows right in the center of that which is exactly what we'll do but that is your bow made so look I'm just going to get my glue gun in here you don't you really don't need a lot and obviously your fingers are well out of the way so just squeeze some down the hot glue gun you don't need a lot just enough to stick that onto your hessian and just sort of push it in so it stays and it'll take a minute or so to actually stick so a little bit of hot glue and again we'll just put them at sort of jaunty angles and that hot glue will really hold it fast and just follow your wreath all the way around try to get them at sort of quirky angles as you go and then but also mind your wires as well because don't forget this is really hot glue so we're going to put one right in the middle 
and then start to think about how many you need you might have not done enough maybe you need to do one or two more depends I suppose on the size of your wreath this is a 12 inch wreath that I've got here um, and my squares as you know are five inches so that really seems to work well just push them down this is the fun bit I think again just pop them down it's really starting to fill up now there we go so don't forget if you're making an Easter one you can fill with little Easter eggs or maybe some some lovely seasonal flowers it could be artificial flowers it could be real flowers you can still stick them on with the hot glue gun so again just push them down maybe one more at the bottom there and don't forget you've got all these gorgeous ribbons going on I need to put one more in I'm going to put one over there let's see see if I can get it in there <laughs> you can do as many as you like the trouble is I know you'll get carried away such good fun and I'm going to put another one in here and like I say try to get them at quirky angles <gasps> wow look at that so that's completed now look at that isn't that amazing and we've got lights as well let's see if I can switch them on see if I can get them to flash oh hold on there we go so there's our gorgeous wreath now take a look at that so we're all done I've got the lights flashing I better put a disclaimer hadn't I in the description we've got flashing lights let's just get it so it's static there and of course don't forget you can have lights at any time of the year and don't forget this could be for your holiday season not too late or it could be for spring it could be for summer it could be for autumn think of those autumn colors so there we are that's your seasonal wreath how beautiful is that bye everybody